you know, and, and kids, listen up, because there's pressure as you get older, especially you become a teenager, to try to conform and be cool and fit in with other peers and other friends. And oh, they're gonna mock me if I'm just too goody goody, and they're gonna mock me if I'm, you know, not going along with all, with a bunch of wickedness. Okay, and if you hear what God has to say, and you'd say, you know what? No, I'm willfully just gonna go this other direction. Watch out, my friends. Seriously, watch out. Because we have an example here that we're turning to in Judges 16. You can say, oh, well, Zedekiah, he was just some wicked, unsaved king. You know what? In Judges chapter 16, we have another example of a man whose eyes were plucked out. And he was saved. His name is Samson. And he was used mightily of the Lord. He did a lot of great things in the service of the Lord. But you know what? He had some problems of his own. And he decided to get into some of his own wickedness. And he suffered and paid as a result of that as well. You're in Judges chapter 16. Look at verse number 18. The Bible says, And when Delilah saw that he had told her all his heart, she sent and called for the lords of the Philistines, saying, Come up this once, for he hath showed me all his heart. Then the lords of the Philistines came up unto her and brought money in their hand. And she made him sleep upon her knees. And she called for a man, and she caused him to shave off the seven locks of his head. And she began to afflict him, and his strength went from him. And she said, The Philistines be upon thee, Samson. And he awoke out of his sleep and said, I will go out as at other times before and shake myself. And he wist not that the Lord was departed from him. But the Philistines took him and put out his eyes and brought him down to Gaza and bound him with fetters of brass. And he did grind in the prison house. Albeit the hair of his head began to grow again after he was shaven. Now, in chapter 15, at the end of chapter 15, it, it, the Bible tells us, you know, kind of the summary. You know, with the judges, you get the summary of, and he judged Israel for 20 years or 40 years or whatever. We kind of get that summary in chapter 15, but the story doesn't end there because when he dies, he doesn't end up dying as a judge of Israel anymore because of what happens to him here and, what, and where it starts off. The last verse in chapter 15 gives that summary of his, of his judge, of his judging of Israel. But then look at verse number one in chapter 16, and we see how things end up the way they are. Verse number one says, Then went Samson to Gaza and saw there an harlot and went in unto her. This was Samson's sin. Samson had eyes for harlots, for whores, for, for heathen women that he's not supposed to go in unto. And he had eyes that would wander and eyes that would that would focus on the things that he is clearly instructed not to do, not to participate in. And as a result, then his eyes end up getting plucked out of his own head. And I, Samson's a saved man. I don't, I, I, you know, go ahead and try to convince me otherwise. The spirit of the Lord came upon Samson more than any other person recorded in scripture. When that phrase saying the spirit of the Lord came upon him, the spirit of the Lord came upon him and he strengthened him and he had all these great fights and battles and victories. And, but it doesn't matter how greatly God has used you. If you, when you choose to just willfully go into sin, God will punish you. And we need to always remember that. And here's the thing is that when you willfully go into sin, you know, sin has a, has this effect of blinding you. Now, physically, obviously I went to two examples here where they're literally having their eyes poked out. But when you decide to choose to ignore God's word, what you're doing is you're blinding yourself. You're not, you're not allowing yourself to see the light of God's word, the light of the truth, and you're choosing to go into darkness and you're going to blind yourself. And when you blind yourself, you're gonna, there's a lot of things you're not going to see anymore. And when people start backsliding and going away into sin, things that, that they never would have even had to think about, things that you'd be able to observe and see and, and identify as, oh man, this is wrong, I'm not going to do that. When, when, you're, when you're living righteously, once you start getting into that sin, you get into willful sin, there's all kinds of things that you're going to get off into that you don't even realize um, is there because you're walking in darkness.